Hi, welcome to a very short introduction to Firebug. In the early days of the web, developers had to rely on a combination of their text editor and the view source window to see what their code was doing in the browser. While still an easy way to look at and edit web pages, there are easier ways to do it. With Firebug, a quick key presser menu action is all you need to inspect elements on the HTML page. Elements are arranged in a tree. You can navigate through the elements with the cursor keys or the mouse to easily find what you're looking for. The HTML status bar shows you where you are in your document and will even allow you to copy the X path to pinpoint this location later. The side panels include the style panel, which shows you which styles were inherited from different selectors and elements. The computed panel shows the browser's computed version of your CSS. The layout panel shows detailed positioning information about the element. And the last, the DOM sub panel shows the JavaScript properties for the selected HTML element in the HTML panel. There are two main ways to open Firebug. The Firebug icon on the Firefox status bar and the F12 key on your keyboard. When you're done, you can close it using the off button on the far right side of the tool strip. The other two buttons in this area are the minimize button and the detach window button. Minimize is useful if you want to maximize the available viewing area, but still want to receive console messages, network traffic, or debugger breakpoints. The Firebug icon shows orange, indicating that it's minimized. Detaching the window lets you debug the page you're viewing in a separate window. Now a quick tour of some of the other interface features in Firebug. The Bug icon menu in the top left of the Firebug client area contains mechanisms for opening Firebug and new windows, setting global options, keyboard shortcuts, and turning on accessibility. It also contains quick links to online documentation and various resources from the getfirebug.com website. Next to the bug menu is the inspect button used to bring up the inspector. A pause button beside that is useful for debugging different web page behaviors. More on that momentarily. The tabs to the right of the pause button contain panels for each of the major areas of Firebug. Inside the tabs, a small triangle indicates that a mini menu is available containing further options specific to the selected tab. The console tab provides a way for your web page to produce debugging information for you to interact with. It also indicates when you've encountered an error and allows you to enter the debugger. Pressing the pause button while the console is activated enables break on errors. When an error is encountered in the web page, you will be taken to the debugger with a breakpoint set. In addition, the console provides an interactive JavaScript command line for executing bits of code. You can expand the command line for entering longer, multi-line code fragments. The command line also includes a convenient set of shortcut features which allow you to quickly gain access to HTML elements or tags or get access to an object with an XPath query. You can run it using the Run button, and that shows up in the console, which you can select, bringing you back to the HTML panel. Another useful feature in the console is the Profile button. This allows you to measure where your JavaScript is spending the most execution time. Clicking it again generates the table and all of the timing information sorted by percentage. The script panel is where you can debug JavaScript interactively. The tool strip at the top of the panel lets you select a source file from the files dropdown. You may have to reload your web page to get all of the files if you've opened Firebug after the page load finished. With a script selected, you can set a breakpoint inside any function and Firebug will stop when the JavaScript interpreter reaches that line. And here it is. Once you're in a breakpoint, the Watch subpanel shows all va variables defined in your current scope. Here you can set a Watch expression to break when your expression evaluates to true. 
You can achieve a similar result by right-clicking on the breakpoint and selecting Set Conditional Breakpoint. I'll just set that to true for now. And it breaks. When you're in a breakpoint, you can step into a function on the current line step over the current line, run to return, or press continue. In the script panel, the pause button behaves as a break on next feature. When set, Firebug will stop JavaScript execution on the next function call the interpreter sees. This can be useful for determining what bit of code is firing when you interact with something on the page. The net panel shows the running time of all requests on a web page and the amount of time it takes to retrieve the response. Each line is broken down into phases that you can see. There are individual timings if you hover over the, over the line. Selecting a line and expanding it with the twisty arrow on the left lets you see the individual request and response headers as well as the response itself and any cache information if available. The mini menu on the net panel allows you to disable the browser cache entirely if you're interested strictly in the network performance. If the response is JSON data, you'll see that formatted nicely in a separate tab. The pause button on the net panel will break on a new XML HTTP request and bring you to the script panel allowing you to see where the request came from and debug it as you would any other JavaScript. This concludes our short introduction to Firebug. These are only some of the features available in this powerful development tool. Thanks for watching.